Laova gave me a free t-shirt and they also sent me this lens to test. So I will tell you all the best about the lenses right after the intro. Macro Flow Diesel TV. All right, uh, the thing with the t-shirt as a payment for me telling you only good stuff about anything doesn't work. If you want me to talk about something I don't mean, you have to pay at least two shirts and a pair of trousers. <laughs> so I will only tell you what I really think about the Laova lenses. Um, Laova sent me the 65 millimeter lens and I already had the 100 millimeter macro lens by Laova and we want to compare them a little bit today and we also want to talk a bit about the 25 millimeter ultra macro which is a very special lens so we will talk about that separately a bit later first of all we want to compa compare these two lenses and their, their pros and cons first pro for the 100 millimeter the 100 millimeter lens is a full frame lens it means you can use it on every cam no matter which sensor it has but the 65 millimeter is only designed for mirrorless APS-C cameras so that's the first plus for the 100 millimeter lens another plus for the 100 millimeter is the better bokeh it's not very relevant, at least for me. Um, at higher magnifications, over 1x, you get soft backgrounds, no matter how many aperture plate your lens has. But if you want to use the lens also for portraits or for uh, more moderate macro, like uh, shooting sleeping butterflies and you want to get a nice background with natural light, then this is a plus for the 100 millimeter. Um, but like I said it's not very relevant um, one thing that's a pro and a con on both lenses is the working distance you have 35% uh, less working distance with the 65 millimeters just because of the shorter focal length that can be a pro but that also can be a con as, as a pro you can shoot bigger subjects and you can get closer especially when you shoot with the diffuser uh, I have my own lane there <laughs> um, you can go closer and get your subject under the diffuser while you sometimes for bigger subjects are very far away subject from diffuser so that is a pro and a con uh, the pro for the longer focal lens is when you shoot rubber flies for example or any other critters that like to fly away very fast and are shy the three centimeter additional working distance can be a pro so in that case I give a plus for both lenses another thing that's a plus for both is the image quality and the sharpness I really can't complain they both are great performers they give you sharp and nice images and I couldn't see a difference in sharpness and image quality between these two lenses so that's another plus for both lenses another big pro for me well at least for me is that you can screw on a Raynox on the 100 millimeter like I I always have it on and you come up to 3x you can also screw a Raynox on the 65 millimeters, but the effect is not as big as with the with the 100 millimeter. Longer focal length means uh, the Raynox increases the magnification a bit more than with the shorter focal length. So, for me, it's very good to have these this uh, more magnification. I really like shooting shoot jumping spiders, and the most jumping spiders here in Germany are very small and uh, while I was shooting with the 65 millimeter only I sometimes miss the the more magnification I get with my 100 millimeter and the Raynox on it and so that's definitely a pro for the 100 millimeter but I would say that's more for the advanced users if you are a beginner 
two eggs are way enough. To, until you handle two eggs, you have to practice a lot and going up really needs some more skills. So that's a plus for the for the 100 millimeters, but I would say it's only a plus for advanced users that want to go for higher magnifications. Um, what else do I have on my list? Yeah, we have something else. Uh, both lenses also have uh, some cons, which are the same on both lenses. I really don't like the aperturing on both. It's very easy turnable and it happened often to me while I'm in the field shooting that I accidentally rotate the focus ring and so exposure of the pics uh, sucked afterwards. So I really would wish to have uh, a perture ring that has more resistance and some harder clicks that it doesn't rotate without you wanting it to rotate. And besides from that, another con is that both lenses have a focus ring that rotates in the other direction. At the end it doesn't really matter to me if it goes in goes left or right to infinity, but if you have two lenses of the same manufacturer, I really would uh, think it's better to have it on one side. No matter which side, but please decide for one direction. It's very strange if you use both lenses and the one lens you have to rotate left to get closer and the other one on the right side. That's a con on both. So, well. Now the most important factor, as you can already see, is the size and weight. The 65 millimeters is, I would say, it's more than half the size and the weight of the 100 millimeter. I didn't expect it to be such a big benefit, but especially after I used the small lens for a few weeks and then switched back to my 100 millimeter, I realized how good it is to have a small and light lens. It's so much easier when you carry it around the whole day. Your hands don't get tired that easy. And besides from that, it's much easier to handle while shooting. Most of you will know the left hand leaf technique. It's so much easier to grab the cam with only one hand. It's light and easy. While with the 100 millimeter, you really need some power and big hands, I would say. I have to an extra grip on my camera to handle the lens better but the 65 millimeter works with the bare cam it's very very small and light and so those are definitely two plus for the 65 millimeters all in all we have the same amount of plus for both lenses and if i would have to choose one of them I must say, I'm not sure which one I would buy nowadays. But I really think the handling of the 65mm is very, very much better than the 100mm. On the other hand, I really like the fact that you can go up to 3x with the 100mm and Raynox on. Um, besides from the more magnification you get, you can also trick a bit the refraction. I will talk about that in another video later. And with that diffraction trick, you can also gain a bit more depth of field with the 100 millimeter and the Raynox on it. But on the other hand, this lens is very much smaller. I really think about also buying the 65 millimeter additional to the 100 millimeter I already have. But I'm not sure, maybe when I have a bit of money left, I will go for this one too, because the handling is really, really nice. Well, that's it for these two lenses. A lot of beginners uh, write me messages, ask which lower lens should I buy, the 65mm, the 100mm or the 25mm Ultra Macro. Well, if you buy the 65 or the 100mm lens, you can't do anything wrong. They are both great performers and also suitable for beginners. 
they have great image quality and you don't make something wrong no matter which one you buy i told you about the pros and the cons so you have to make your own decision but especially for beginners i can't recommend the 25 millimeter lens it's not like a normal 25 millimeter lens it's more like a 25 millimeter wide angle lens reversed and it only goes from two and a half x up to 5x. The other two lenses can be used for normal photography. You can do landscapes, you can do portrait shots, but this only works for very, very small subjects. You start at 2.5x and 2.5x on a normal APS-C sensor, which is 25mm wide, means you can only shoot a subject that is less than one centimeter long. If you want to shoot a bee, for example, it's not possible with the lens. You can only shoot a half bee or you can shoot the portrait of a bee, but you can't shoot anything else. And if you want to go up to 5x, that's a very, very tricky thing, especially in the field without a tripod handheld. So I really like the lens and sh I shoot, I would say 20% of my shots are made with that lens, the rest with my 100 millimeter lens and yeah it's very special and definitely no lens for a beginner but it's sharp and offers a great image quality but you have the, the typical problems with high magnifications your depth of field is uh, thin like a razor blade you can't stop down the lens much because diffraction kicks in very early and another thing that just came into my mind uh, the 65 and the 100 millimeter, they are both uh, apochromatic lenses. You don't get any purple fringing with the lenses. Chromatic aberrations are completely erased on the, these two, which is a great thing to have. You don't have to do any editing. While uh, the 25 millimeter sometimes gives you some green and purple fringing and sometimes a strange green that can't be easily removed in in Lightroom so you have to be you have to use some tricks to get the aberrations off and yeah well if you are not a beginner anymore and you really want to increase the magnifications you made uh, some experience with higher magnifications this is a good lens in addition to a normal macro lens when you have a, a 90 millimeter macro lens and Raynox on it that goes up to 2x and that's not enough for you anymore, you master the 2x, then I can really recommend the lens, but not as a standalone lens. If you want to buy a macro lens, that's not the only macro lens you want to have, at least for work in the field. So you better choose the 65 or the 100 millimeter. Yeah, I think that was everything I wanted to tell you today. Next video will be an intro to my longer series. I will produce a little macro tutorial with everything about shooting macro with diffuser and flash. So stay tuned for the next time. Bye bye.